Welcome to the Academic Writing Amplified podcast. On this podcast, we believe that the culture of academia needs to change radically. Women and non-binary people are revolutionizing academia within institutions that were not built for us. If you're ready to reject the culture of overwork, kick guilt and overwhelm to the curb and amplify your voice to make a real impact on your field without breaking down or burning out, you're in the right place. With our team of experienced writing coaches as co-hosts, we'll share insights and talk to inspiring guests to bring you the practical strategies, systems, and mindset shifts you need to find time to write, publish work you love, and design your career on your terms. And it all starts with writing. Let's go. Hello, and welcome back to the Academic Writing Amplified podcast. I'm your host, Kathy Mazak, and this podcast is brought to you by Scholar's Voice and particularly by our Navigate Your Writing Roadmap 12-week program, which is open for early enrollment. You can go to scholarsvoice.org slash navigate, find the pink button that says apply and fill out your application today. Now, this is early enrollment. The cohort doesn't start until January 29th, but if you know you wanna do this and you wanna get our bonus, which is called the Holiday Binge Bonus, which unlocks all the content for the 12-week program for you so that you can binge it over the holidays if you wish, you don't have to, but if you wanted to look at some of the parts, do some of the work ahead of time, you can and then implement along with your cohort starting in our first meeting, which is actually Friday, February 2nd. Cohort starts January 29th. Very excited about this. We already have a great group forming of early enrollment folks. So if you're interested, go to scholarsvoice.org slash navigate and start your application process now. There's a few steps to it. It includes a one-on-one personal video call with me where we're going to talk about whether the Navigate program is a good fit for you or not. And just having that call in itself is, I think, the first step to making your writing and publishing slow the way that you want it to in 2024. So please check it out. We can't wait to get that cohort started. Oh, one last detail. Applications close December 15th. We're all going to take a nice break. And then we will open applications again later in January for the January 29th start. All right, that's it. I'm so excited. All right, today we are talking about why two hours a week is enough writing time. All right, now I'm sure that I've done an episode about this before. Like, I know I've said these things before. I'm not sure what the title of the episode was the last time I talked about this but it bears repeating. And I always think it's good to kind of work through these ideas in new and different ways. So I want to talk about why two hours a week is enough because probably you don't believe that, right? Like probably you're there like, Kathy, no, there's no way that two hours a week is enough for me to move my writing projects forward. I want to identify some of the beliefs you know, that you're holding on to that make it so you can't believe that two hours a week is enough. And yeah, let's like burst, but, you know, knock over those beliefs, break them down so that you can have a really healthy and beautiful starting point for a positive relationship with your writing. All right. One belief that you are holding on to probably is that you need big blocks of time to write. Like you need spaciousness. And I think that you have that belief because you crave spaciousness so much, right? Like you really have like a deep inside desire to have spaciousness on your calendar, to have time to read and to write and to think. And so the idea of, for example, one thing that I certainly tried that didn't end up working for me, but that I think a lot of people try is to hold one day a week clear of meetings 
and have that be like your writing day. And this sounds beautiful in theory, like absolutely sounds great. But in implementation, it is difficult. So there's lots of reasons it's difficult. I'll give you one that I was just on a call for our new Navigate program. And the person who I was talking to about enrolling said that she was so exhausted by the time she got to her one day a week that was supposed to be clear for writing, she would kind of collapse and use that time for rest. Now, rest, as I have said before, (laughs) is essential for writing. But that pattern of like, I held space in my calendar and I held it for writing, but I used it for rest shows a pattern of like not integrating rest more deeply in other parts of the week. And then the writing time gets rolled over with rest understandably so, but you can see how this belief that like, oh, I'll hold a whole day because I need a day, right? We tell ourselves, I need that spaciousness. We tell ourselves so many things about, I need to warm up. I need to clear my task list. I need to empty my email inbox and then I can do that. And then I'll have all this space to get my writing done. And I need hours and hours that I can really get into a flow and and all of that. Now, I'm not saying that any of these things are wrong necessarily, but if you close the door to other possible ways of getting writing done, then a lot of times that I need to hold the whole day open because I need all this space, what it equals to is no writing, right? So let's agree (laughs) that two hours a week is better than zero hours a week. So if what you're doing currently and the way you're thinking about writing time currently is a good idea, theoretically possible, but not actually happening, then that's equal to zero hours of writing. (laughs) It's not equal to like, we don't count hopes and dreams. (laughs) We can't calculate our number of hours written based on how many we hoped we would write. We have to calculate them based on how much we actually wrote. And so if you could do something in order to actually use two hours a week for writing, I argue that is a a better way to go than holding on to those beliefs, which again, might be true. Sure. Absolutely. And also are unhelpful right now for you. Okay. So that's one way that, you know, our disbelief in two hours is enough might be showing up by trying to hold a whole day clear. The other kind of related to that or the underpinning that is a little bit of like all or nothing thinking, right? And that can be true for that. I need a whole day or I can't do anything, right? That's all or nothing thinking. The same goes for I need to write every day or I can't do anything. So let's, let's imagine that you followed some other writing coaching programs or writing gurus or general thoughts in the world about writing. And you have heard this idea, you know, writing every day is important. Maybe a certain number of words a day is important. And so again, that could be, it might work for you, but probably it's not if you're listening to this podcast. <laughs> Because here's the all or nothing thinking part, right? You're thinking like, oh, to get the result I want, which is that my publications are submitted, to get the result I want, I need to write every day. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday passed. I had writing on my calendar. I didn't do it. So my week is shot. See how that is like all or nothing thinking? Like either I'm doing it every day or I'm not doing it at all. And that's a problem because... Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday goes by, you have your all or nothing thought and you're like, well, screw it, right? You maybe could have had two hours a week by writing on Thursday and Friday, but the all or nothing thinking and your disbelief that that would be enough stopped you from writing for the two hours a week. All right, another example. Let's think of another example. So Another way that we don't believe that two hours of writing a week will help us 
is that we look at our kind of virtual stack of papers, or we think about all of the many publications in process that we have. And we try to make, like we make some kind of false equivalency. Like if I have (laughs) 10 papers, then I need to have this percentage of my week going to writing to move those 10 papers forward. And that's impossible. So two hours isn't going to help me. Like I have so much work to do. Two hours a week isn't going to help me. Again, the undergirding thought is kind of all or nothing thinking, but it can feel so overwhelming, the amount of potential work, right? The amount of maybe co-authored projects that we're on, the amount of potential articles that are sitting there as analyzed data or collected data, all of that. And then besides the fact that you probably have some drafts or partially written on drafts, or maybe the figures for some drafts, all of those papers, we only have three to five of those around, all of that is sitting there and it's taking up a lot of your mental space and your ability to clearly take some kind of action. And again, what happens is that you don't even do two hours of writing a week, right? You do zero hours of writing a week. Let's see, do I want to think of one? One, Okay, one more, one more. One more is sometimes we have a distorted or pie in the sky or imaginary idea about how much time an article will actually take us to finish. So let's take an example. You have an article where you've written a couple of sections, but you got the rest of the article to finish. In your mind, because you haven't sat down and broken into tasks what you actually have left to do, and you don't know how long it takes you to do writing tasks, and also on top of that, you don't have writing dates and times in your calendar. With those three things missing, you just have this like very vague idea of like, oh, it's going to take me hours and hours and hours to finish this article. When actually, that thought, right, that I don't have hours and hours and hours stops you from getting started or stops you from taking two hours of action. When actually a lot of times, and this happens in Navigate a lot, people come in and the first thing we do in the program, the first week, well, we have like a welcome week, which is like orientation. And then when you are first dig into the curriculum, there's two parts to each content piece or each curricular piece for the 12 weeks. One part is like a lesson and a tool that we're teaching you to use. And the other part is curriculum around moving what we call your low hanging fruit project through to completion. So like your low hanging fruit project is an article that is some amount done. We like to say that there are words on a, some words on a page at least, or maybe there's figures created. Maybe it's farther along than that. You choose a project like for the first week, there's a rubric that helps you choose that project. We're scaffolding you, right? In like decision-making around which of your many almost done articles to choose. We call that your low-hanging fruit project. And that's the one that you work on every single week in the 12 weeks of the program so that you submit it by the end. And there's curriculum. It's tiny, like little mini lessons about each of those things. Plus there's co-writing and coaching that helps you move that project through. In the first week, like I said, the first week, the curricular piece is mapping your pipeline. And then the curricular piece for the low-hanging fruit is about choosing your low-hanging fruit project. So many people come into the program and they have a vague idea of some projects that might be their low-hanging fruit. And they think, I'm not going to finish it in the 12 weeks or... Some people also think I'm going to finish it sooner than 12 weeks. Then you get to the next week of the program and you break projects into tasks. And we do the stuff around like what's a task and how long does it take you and all of that stuff. And lo and behold, some people figure out, oh, I actually need more time than I thought. And many people figure out, oh, I need less time than I thought. Here, I've been putting off doing this because I thought it needed hours and hours of work. And actually, it doesn't need that many hours of work, which is why two hours a week 
would have been enough. They have this realization in the program, but before they could have had that realization, right? That's what I'm trying to tell you on the podcast. (laughs) Two hours a week could be enough, right? But if you don't have the skills that I've been talking about so far, right? The decision-making around what project to work on next. So that's a skill, developing your decision-making and discernment. Also breaking a project into tasks, estimating time to task and holding writing space on your calendar. All of those things are essential to see a project through to submission. If you're missing one of them, you won't make it to the end of the project. Now you, the estimating your time to task is definitely the hardest part and takes the longest to really develop, but you can start to get there. All of those things are necessary to move projects to submission. So this is all to say that two hours is so much better than zero hours. <laughs> two hours, when you add up, think about that's, that would be like in a month, it would be like eight hours of writing. In a semester, gosh, that would be 30 hours of writing. And when you know, more or less, when you do some of the work, like we take you through this time to task data collection table and all these different things and navigate to help you understand how long it takes you to write different parts of an article or different types of writing projects, you can start to estimate accurately and you can start to see that, oh, it's going to take me 20 hours to finish this, which means that I either need to schedule four hours of writing a day of good solid writing time with flow a day for five days. And if I don't have that amount of time, which many of us don't, unless we're on a writing retreat, then I need to think, oh, well, two hours a week for 10 weeks, and then it would be done. So all of this is just about stopping all or nothing thinking, right? So like really That all or nothing thinking like, oh, things have to be this certain way. I have to have the whole day or I'm not writing at all. I have to do writing every day of the week and I can't skip. And if I break the chain, then I failed and I'm not going to try for the other two days of the week or whatever. Like all of this all or nothing thinking is holding you back from taking like a pretty small step, right? One to two hours a week that is really going to move the needle for you. Now, I'm not saying it's easy to hold two hours a week clear and dedicated for writing. It is not easy. That is a skill you need to develop. It's about boundaries. It's also about organization and time management. We work on all of that inside of our Navigate program, of course. And I've talked about it a lot on the podcast, different strategies. But really, like, just those two hours could really be moving you forward. So everybody who's listening to this podcast and thinking like, oh my goodness, thank goodness. Now I have all this time over break. I encourage you to imagine what would your break look like if there was two hours of writing per week in it and then lots of family time and lots of rest and lots of recovery and preparation by what I mean by preparation is like, fueling yourself kind of mentally and socially and intellectually maybe for the year ahead. You don't need huge blocks of time. You don't need days and days. Having a writing retreat would be lovely if you have one of those planned for break. Have the best time. It's lovely. That's not like regular life, right? So Writing retreats are definitely part of the writing strategies that we teach inside of Navigate and that I advocate for on this podcast. But two hours a week is enough. Now, one last thing, and I know I've been talking a lot about Navigate in this episode, but I really poured everything <laughs> into that program. And so it, everything does relate back to Navigate for me. But watch what Navigate does, right? For 12 weeks, you work on the curricular, watch the videos or listen to them as audio private podcast episodes, do the worksheets. Takes you about an hour. Every Friday, we have a live call. It's either a coaching call or a co-writing call. We alternate back and forth for about an hour. So for 12 weeks, 
you will flex the muscle and strengthen the muscle of holding two hours a week dedicated to your writing. So at the end of Navigate, not only will you have submitted your low-hanging fruit, but you will have implemented the practice, and especially in this next cohort that runs January 29th through April 19th, which is, if you're on a semester system, the spring semester pretty much, right? You will have honored your writing for two hours a week. You would have held that time. If you're listening and you're thinking, well, two hours of writing is enough, but I don't have that either. (laughs) Then in Navigate, because you're in the program, you will have done that for 12 weeks. And then you get to continue to do that because you learned, you strengthened that two hours a week dedicated to my writing muscle. And then the exciting part is that because you have the momentum of having learned so much in Navigate, but then also of having submitted the low hanging fruit project, you will want to do more and you will find a way to do more than just two hours of writing a week. Many of the clients who do our Navigate program meet up outside of the program for co-writing times. So if you don't have that as part of your life, people love co-writing so much inside the program that they keep doing it even when the program's over or they join us for another round of the program and are with us co-writing that way. So it's enough. Two hours a week is enough and you can do it. You can do it. If you want support, I would love to help you with that in our Navigate program. We are taking applications for early enrollment now. The last day to apply is December 15th. Then we'll close applications and then we'll open up applications again in January for our January 29th start. So go to scholarsvoice.org slash navigate, hit the pink button that says apply, and I'll see you inside. Have a wonderful day. Bye. Thank you so much for spending your valuable time supporting yourself and your writing by listening to this episode. If you like what you heard today, the best way to say thank you is to hop on over to Apple iTunes and write an honest review. The more reviews, the more amazing academic women and non-binary people will find this podcast. So go write one now.